Hi and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the A Plus Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we look at troubleshooting motherboards. All right, welcome to our last video in the series of motherboards. We, of course, have other videos on the way. But in this one, I want to take a look at what happens when bad things happen to good motherboards. When we talk about troubleshooting, I want to talk about some general principles first. And you're going to hear me bring these up in other videos as well because you really can't just learn all the possible problems with a device. A lot of this is trying to narrow in on where the problem is at. And so I like to classify computer problems into categories. And I'm not the only one who does this. You'll find other authors out there who do this as well. So the first category of computer problems is hardware problems. There is a physical problem with a device. It's broken, it's not plugged in, it's shorted, something. Then we have BIOS and drivers. This is the communication between the operating system and the device. Somehow the operating system isn't communicating properly with a device via the BIOS and drivers. Then we have the operating system. So there's something wrong with your Windows, there's something wrong with your Mac OS X, there's something wrong with your Linux, there's something wrong with your operating system. Then we have applications. So for example, if everything's working on your computer, but everything crashes the minute you launch Word or a computer game, that's the problem. It's a problem with that application. And then finally, we can also have problems with the users. You know, my password doesn't work. My password doesn't work. My password doesn't work. And then you go in and it's cap lock. And all of a sudden, it works. So that would be a user problem. So hardware, BIOS drivers, operating system, applications, and ID10T errors, otherwise known as user errors. Now, we also have something called differential diagnosis. Now, remember that I teach anatomy and physiology at the college as well as computers. And so my perspective on technology computers is more from the life science point of view. And in the medical world, we have differential diagnosis, which means that we understand that we have most likely this problem, but it can also be other issues. And differential diagnosis is basically defined as the process of weighing the probability of one disease versus the other disease. What we're seeing here is that you know, if you go to the doctor and you have a stuffy nose and you feel icky and you're hot and you're warm and all that fun stuff, you most likely have the cold. Now, you might have Ebola, <laughs> you might have something else, but you most likely have the cold, and so that's what they're going to treat you for. But it could also be these other things. In computer repair, we do the same thing. When you're talking to the client or the customer and you need to talk to them, you can say, hey, look, from what you're describing, it could be this, most likely is this, but it could also be this, this, and this. So we're going to try to fix this first, and if that's the problem, this is what will happen, and if it's not this, then it's either this or this. So um, that's a differential diagnosis. And basically, if you hear hoof beats in the woods, it's most likely a horse and not a zebra. Could be a zebra, but most likely a horse. The other thing we need to know about when we're dealing with electronics and technology is the bathtub curve. Basically, what we're looking at here is that electronic devices will either fail at the beginning of the lifespan. In other words, within the first 30 to 60 days, the thing goes bad or they last their lifespan. So for example, I have here a, um, a Jawbone, it's an up, it's one of these walk track tracker things and it died within 60 days. This was a defective device. Now I'm not saying all of these are defective, but this one happens to be a lemon. So this came with a manufacturer defect. If it didn't die within the first 30 to 60 days, then it would have lived its lifespan, typically unless you beat it up. Dead out of the box in the first few days is known as infant mortality. I'm not making this up. This is what we call it. If it's dead out of the box within the first few days, it's called infant mortality. When the device gets to the end of its lifespan, as it starts to approach the end of the time it's supposed to be around, you're going to see more frequent and more severe problems until it dies. And by the way, every electronic manufacturer knows about this, which is why they try to sell you the extended warranties. They know that they're going to make their money on this middle time where it's not going to break down. The manufacturer warranty covers the built-in errors. Then you have this extended warranty. And you know what? Those extended warranties usually expire by the end of the lifespan because that's when they know the device will start to fail. 
So my advice to you is don't get the extended warranties, usually. So motherboard realities. In the old days, when computer components were crazy expensive, if you had a motherboard problem, you would break out the soldering gun and try to fix it yourself. Now, no, 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 no. If the motherboard is dead, you just get a new motherboard. Now, if a component dies, so for example, I had a motherboard where the built-in network card just wouldn't work. I went and bought a $10, $15 NIC, popped it in there, and had network connections. So if the motherboard itself dies, dead, get a new one. If a function on the motherboard dies, for example, a modem, then you just buy the expansion card and replace it and you should be good to go. So we have different types of failures. So first one is catastrophic failure. This is a big one. The system will not boot. And like we said before, if you could have infant mortality, this is a burn in failure. This is when the motherboard dies within the first 30 days. The most common cause of catastrophic failure in motherboards is electrostatic discharge or ESD. And we looked at ESD in previous lessons. And the only fix for a catastrophic failure is simply to buy a new motherboard and be careful with it in the future. The next one is a component failure. This can be an intermittent problem. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen really kind of hard to diagnose because they're not always there. Most common cause are electrical surges and of course ESD, electrostatic discharge. You might also have a bad BIOS. Um, maybe the device itself doesn't know how to communicate with the component very well and there might be a fix out there. And so you always look and see if there's a fix, there's an update that might take care of the problem. And of course you might replace the component with an add-on card like I told you about my um, network card that died. So those are basically the troubleshooting. Again, there's really not much troubleshooting to, to be had with a motherboard. With a motherboard, either it's kind of dead or it's not dead. There's very little in between and there's really no fixing a motherboard. You just get a new one. So let's go now, like I do in all the end of my videos, to my top five picks for this particular lesson. My first one, again, Thank you so much, Geeky Jersey, for my awesome, awesome, awesome and very comfortable Doctor Who jersey. You can find this as well as more really cool jerseys at geekyjersey.com and be sure to tell them that Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford's class sent you. The next one is motherboard.org at motherboard.org. Be sure to check them out, obviously. We're talking about motherboards, so you want to look at them. The next ones are Gigabyte. And you want to check them out. They are manufacturers of some really good uh, motherboards. And depending on the ratings, they're usually in the top five for motherboard manufacturers. The next one is Asus, which also makes motherboards as well as other components. Also a very, 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 very good brand of motherboard manufacturers. And our last one is MSI, also a very strong motherboard manufacturer. So until our next series of videos thank you so much for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button in case you haven't done it already it helps our ratings click like and of course share it with your friends and until later have fun studying out there goodbye for now